It's only been a couple of hours since we kicked off Build Digital 2020, but already so much has happened. The global conversation that is happening right now is overwhelming. My phone is a buzzing with amazing tweets. From the, United, from the United Kingdom to Brazil, South Africa, and India, we're following the conversations on Twitter, and we want to continue hearing from you. So keep the excitement coming using hashtag MSBuild. We want to hear from you, so make sure you do that. We heard from Sachin Nadella about his vision for the future, and that future has also now been crowned with this year's Imagine Cup World Championship team. Not a bad way to start the week. Another great way to kick things off, Scott Hanselman and his band of amazing technical people to talk about the modern development toolkit, developer toolkit, but Scott, we're not done with you yet, so please welcome Scott back, as well as Kayla Cinnamon, Maddie Legere, and Allison Buchholz all. You're here to help us break down what we just heard, and of course, answer some questions. I actually took some notes. Look, you can see them right here. There you go. I took some notes because I wanted to ask you all, and they're real notes, this isn't fake. This is like, look, here, look, four will take it. These are real notes here, real notes. <laughs> It's not, it's all real, okay? Just want to throw that out there. So Scott, let's start with you because y'all dropped like casually a lot of things, like in a really like casual way, like, oh, look at this, a crazy thing. Uh, it just, uh, yeah, let's move on. And it, it was, I feel like we need to stop and maybe take a pause to talk about what you all did. Let's start with uh, WSL2. That was pretty yeah. crazy. Scott, tell us about that. Uh, WSL2 is pretty sweet. Um, it, the idea that there is a real Linux kernel shipping with Windows right now and that I can go and do not just run one Linux, but any number of them. I can go into the Windows store right now. I can search for Linux and see a half dozen Linuxes. I can import and export tar files. So if I want to make a Linux that's just perfect, make my own distribution, my own custom distribution, and then have my team use it is really, really powerful. And then of course the inclusion coming soon of the, uh, the, the GPU support, GUI support, like it's just gonna keep getting better and better and better. Uh, you know, it's happening. You know, the thing for me is because I do machine learning -y stuff and sometimes some of my stuff doesn't even work in Windows, but now Windows actually ships with actual Linux. It's not like some shim, it's actual Linux, actual Linux. Is that, am I getting that right, Scott? Right, so, so WSL1 used a series of what are called Pico processes that are tiny processes that then kind of thunk into the Windows kernel. So when WSL1 would say, open a file, at, from the Linux perspective, um, Windows would go, oh, I'll open that file for you. Now we actually have a tiny, tiny utility virtual machine that fires up in basically less than a second, and we run an actual instance of the Linux kernel. And it's, it's actually a, a Linux that is up on GitHub. So it's a Microsoft forked, LTS hardened Linux with some custom WSL2 uh, sprinkly bits. So uh, WSL2 is real is real Linux. And, and that's the thing that I'm most excited about. But the thing about the uh, WSL2 is cool and Linux is, is cool as well, but it's only cool with a cool terminal. And, and Kayla, you kind of dropped some cool things about the terminal. Tell us all about the terminal. You, you all are releasing some stuff. Tell us about that. Yeah, so today we did launch Windows Terminal 1.0. We've been working on the preview for the last year and we are so excited to launch it today. So right before the keynote, we were hitting go live on all the releases and the blog posts and GitHub. Um, so we're really excited to have Terminal be ready and it's uh, ready for enterprise usage, which is awesome. So as she casually drops these things, I mean, it's not just like, look, I've been using the command shell for many years in Windows. <laughs> Why is this so much better? You need to tell us all and get us all excited about it. <laughs> okay. So it comes with tabs, and then inside those tabs, you can run panes. So you can run any command line application inside the terminal. So you can have your WSL distro next to PowerShell, next to Azure Cloud Shell. And then when you do that, you can also have Unicode characters and emojis and UTF-8 characters. So your prompt can look really pretty. And of course, it supports background images and GIFs. So if you really want to customize your terminal, you can do that as well. Now, here's the thing. I, I was jealous of other people's terminals because I would see like screenshots and they had like these cool colored things that also told them like what conda environment they were in as well as their Git status. That, I, I set it up and it was it's pretty cool. How does that stuff work for people that haven't done that yet? So one great tutorial that uh, Scott Hanselman actually posted was about putting Powerline in Windows Terminal. So I use it all the time, especially when I'm doing Git 
stuff for Windows Terminal and pushing code commits, it tells you the Git status of the branch that you're on, which is really helpful. So I definitely look up uh, Hanselman's Make Your Prompt Pretty uh, Powerline Tutorial. <laughs> the other thing that I thought was pretty impressive was how we actually downloaded it. Literally, this thing called WinGet. Can you tell us about that briefly? Yeah, so WinGet is the new Windows package manager, and the command you run is WinGet, and you can install a bunch of tools, including uh, Windows Terminal 1.0. Yeah, but I mean, like there was like a special button y'all hit, and then like this box came up in front of everything. <laughs> that was wh what was that was not WinGet, right? That was something else. Right, that was the PowerToys Run PowerToy, and it's supposed to provide a better experience for the Run command. And you can do anything in there. You can launch any application, and then you can also run a command line command using the greater than symbol. And that's what we showed um, just a little bit ago in the keynote. That, I mean, I thought it was pretty cool, but I want to move on to Allison, your next, because that code spaces thing is pretty cool. Like, I love looking at like scrolling through your getting started. You know, uh, was it was it a readme? Yes, did you it was all, a readme to get started. Y'all snuck in like an old school file explorer, right? I mean, there was a yes. couple of things that they snuck in, but there are a couple of Easter eggs in there. Yeah, so make sure you go back and find them. There will be prizes worth up to zeros of dollars. Literal high fives if you find all of them. I'm pretty excited. I will so, post another photo of Olive on Twitter. Nice. So tell us about Code Spaces. Why is it important? How can people get started? Yeah, so Code Spaces I think is super important um, in order to get started quickly. Um, actually, my interns that I'm shepherding for the summer don't have their hardware yet. And so we can actually get them loaded into a code space immediately and make them productive from their own personal computers. And I think that is super powerful. And when you think about the open source community, now it's just one button keeping you from contributing to that open source project. And I just think that is so powerful and meaningful, especially when you don't have the ability to just turn around and ask someone for help setting up your machine. I love code spaces clearly, uh, because I get to work on it all day long, um, and our developers are super excited about it as well. Now, here's the thing. I, like, I want to be clear. Like, what is it that Codespaces is doing? Because I think you, you talked about all the awesome benefits, because they are awesome, but what is actually happening? Because I, I want people to understand what's actually happening, because when I saw it, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So tell us what's actually happening. Yeah, so what Codespaces, what, what our service is doing is we actually build a container um, that has everything you need. So if you are already using uh, Docker files for your environment setup, we can actually leverage that if you drop it into your repo. And we can use that to actually build that custom container for you. Um, if you don't have a Docker file, we also have what we call a universal image that we use to build. And that is great for things that have you know, PHP, Python, we've got Node, We've got the Docker uh, CLI already in there for you so that you can really customize it um, if our universal image isn't enough. And so when we build that for you, we then allow you to connect to it through this web-based uh, VS Code uh, in a browser or through Visual Studio Code with our extension. What you saw in my demo is our GitHub integration, and that's in private preview. So you can sign up to get that integration, but right now you could go to Visual Studio Code Spaces and use it uh, with VS Code or VS Code in the browser. And like I said, for our VS users, you can go ahead and sign up for our private preview if you check out uh, aka.ms slash VSCS. And the thing about that is that, like, I like it's it blows my mind because you're basically building a container of the actual environment. Now, is it does it save that container so it's a, a faster restart the next time, or, or how does that work? Yeah, so you can keep that contain that code space around. Uh, you can come back to it. You can suspend it. You can change which client you're using to access it. Um, and when you're done with it, you can just delete it. So for things like pull requests, where you just want to check out some code, see it run, make sure it works, you can quickly build a code space for that, check it out, and then delete it and move on. This is absolutely nuts to me. Like I remember like the first day of every job, well, the first week, all right, I'm going to install Windows. Um, <laughs> yep. boop, 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 right? And then, oh, I need this version of Visual Studio. Boop, 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 right? And then, like, two weeks later, you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. 
But literally with a click of a button and a couple of minutes, like it might even be less than a couple of minutes, but I think you got the sound uh, yeah. effects wrong. It's, though. it's like really? maybe a minute. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's so, so, uh, yeah, there you go. We need to make that into a thing. And I just press the button. Apparently, it's a ringtone. Well, it's <laughs> well. Last but not least, Maddie, I'm going to say Hello. your kitchen is legit. First of all. Oh, thank you. One I did tweet it out. Oh, yeah. I said that link wrong. Yeah. Um, you're just going to want to Google Visual Studio Code Spaces to get to our sign up. Fantastic. With Bing. Google with Bing. That's how I say it. Google with Bing. All right, Maddie. So your kitchen is beautiful. Just want to say that, number one. Number two, that demo where Scott was messing with your code and it reflected directly on your phone. Like, that was your literal phone, right? That oh, you yeah. Were, oh, yep, that was my iPhone. Okay, so... Tell us how that wizardry worked, and hopefully you didn't have to sacrifice any animals to make that, because holy cow, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, it is. there's so much cool things going on for developer productivity in Xamarin right now. Um, and that was actually two of our, I call them hot tools, hot reload and hot restart, working together with live share. So there was a whole setup. I was at my kitchen island. I finished my lunch, ran back to my desk for this. Um, and, and I had my iPhone plugged in to my laptop using Hot Restart, which is basically a way that we deploy your apps when you build them even faster. And it's cool because it just takes a subset of the app of what's changed and spits it back over to the device over the wire. Sweet. Then I was live shared with Scott, and then uh, Scott changed some stuff, and it changed in the file because it's live share, it's all my environment. And that triggered a hot reload, which is how we change the UI on your running app when you're actually debugging it. So it's a really nice way to, if you're just tweaking your UI, tweaking your XAML, see those changes reflected instantly while you're running with your real data. And it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool because, uh, first of all, Scott, your, your choice of coloring kind of was off on it. It kind of made it all, just want to throw that out there just, to, just a tad. But it's cool that you were able to do, it was over live share that you were able to do this kind of thing. Now tell me, in your experience with live share, give me like maybe a 10 second bullet of why people should start thinking about using it? Uh, because I'm home and I am not the best coder and I can live share with someone and they can fix my broken project right there. That's it. Okay. Well, I mean, this is this is pretty cool. You all are rock stars. I loved uh, everything about the, the keynote. I loved how it was in Teams. And it feels like if we can get a wide shot, it feels like, like I'm on like ESPN or something. Look at this. <laughs> So uh, tell us about the sports ball thing. I want everyone's reaction, right? <laughs> okay, so it's conversations like this that get me excited for Build each and every year. Thank you all for joining us. We've got more key segments, more interviews, and more deep dives, and more for you to explore. But first, it's time for our next key segment with our own Scott Guthrie as he pulls on the red polo. Let's go to that right now. <laughs> 